You get to your work building and badge in. No beep, nothing. You check to see if you're actually holding your bus pass and not your badge. You take a step back. The badge reader's there. It's part of the building. You step forward and look through the glass door and see that everything that's not part of the building is gone. Welcome to your first path. I've been reading Designing Your Life by Bill Burnett and Dave Evans. It's about looking at your life, particularly your career, and applying design thinking to it. It's definitely a lot more upbeat than the beginning of this video. One path is if your current path continued. Another path is if you thought completely outside of the box without worrying that people might laugh at you. And the other path is the path laid out at the beginning of this video. Path number one. What if your current path were taken away completely? This question is the European daughter kidnappers of life design questions. It serves as a reminder that you've got a particular set of skills that are outside of your day to day. It helps to get you thinking about what other interests you have that could be potential careers. If you've got a side gig, then that's probably the first place to start thinking about. Designing your life helps you create a five year plan and then evaluate it based on different factors. Then if you come up with one that you enjoy, it helps you plan out a prototype that you can use to experience the end of that journey in the short term. Maybe you do enjoy some aspects of your side job enough to go full time with it. You're currently a teacher, but you also lived a previous life in a special forces unit. Your five year plan is to open a small self defense school and to be the head teacher there. You can prototype that by putting a lesson plan together and teaching one person on the side to see how much you enjoy teaching self-defense. Path number two. What if your current path continued? Maybe you're actually pretty happy with your current path, and I have a feeling this might be the case for a lot of people who read the book. The book addresses that you don't need that five-year plan and you can just pick and apply certain aspects of it to your life, of the book to your life. They highlight a professor who has done exactly that. He looked at the life he wanted and the priorities and decided that he didn't want to take higher roles that were offered to him. He was living a very fulfilling life with interesting work and plenty of time to spend with his family. This question, what if your current path continued, is helpful partly also for just being grateful for what you have. But it also identifies some places where you can improve if you want to do that and lay out a path to get there as well. This is where you might be doing the type of work you enjoy in a field that you're not that interested in. Or vice versa, maybe you're in the right field but want to do different work. Let's say you're at the tail end of your professional basketball career. You've got three years left. You look around at people who are in your position and see what's possible. On one hand, you see that a lot of them become media personalities. That seems pretty cool. You can still be around the league and talk about it with other people and get paid for it. But you're going to need to work on your speaking skills, and that's something that will be hard and it will take a while. It might be worth it. Maybe you can keep playing instead because you love playing the game so much. You see that there's a three on three league with former players. Great. Then you see one person after another go down with failed body part after failed body part. Time for Toastmasters.com. Path number three What if you were in a magical world? where people didn't laugh at your dreams. The book acknowledges that it might be weird to other people that you want to change things so drastically. They might even laugh at you. But this question is good in that it explicitly says don't think about these other people. It's kind of like that exercise in elementary schools or professional seminars where you try to reach up as high as you can. Then the teacher says something like, oh now reach higher and you can always go a little further than your first attempt. So with the first two paths you're thinking outside the box but you can always think of something a little more outlandish. I would call this the passion plan. What did you enjoy as a kid? A lot of people want to just blindly follow their passion and sometimes that's not a great idea either. So you take your passion path and then you can rank it based on different factors again. How realistic is it with your current tool set including your network? What changes would you have to make? Then you can also prototype it to see how much you actually enjoy it. Let's take Anthony Bourdain. I've heard plenty of people say they'd want to live his life, but they probably just want to live episodes of No Reservations. If you watch any of the behind the scenes episodes or episodes of The Layover, it's a ton of work. 
Not to mention it was after decades in the food industry while becoming a published author on the side. Thinking through things this way allows you at least to figure out what aspects of your wild outcome you really like and want to follow. As a very basic prototype, you could try a re new restaurant in your city and write a blog post about it. I enjoy reading about comedy. Comedy writing seems pretty cool, but it seems difficult and competitive. One of my favorite writers is Simon Rich. He wrote for SNL, The New Yorker, has written a bunch of books, and created Man Seeking Woman. In an interview with James Altucher, he says, If I were young and starting out, the only thing I would do is make internet videos all day long. I'm not young, and I don't have all day, but I'll keep making internet videos. Thanks for listening, and please hit subscribe if you like this.